You can probably tell that I'm enjoying receiving these fabulous questions via email from all of you. So today we're going to answer the question, how do you square a pinwheel block? Probably answers for a lot of other blocks out there as well. So let's get started. Okay, class in session, please take a seat. That's right, we're gonna get started. Welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, official maker of fun right here on YouTube. And I am loving receiving all of these great email questions about how to make stuff, how to fix stuff, how to solve stuff. So rob at michaelmillerfabrics.com is my email. Let me know what I can help you learn and understand in the world of quilting. This is a great way for us all to work together. So yes, the question on the table is, how do you square a pinwheel block? And the supplies you're gonna need today is a ruler that has some sort of a 45 degree line on it, and probably a lot bigger ruler than you think you need. You're gonna need a rotary cutter, you're gonna need a stack of blocks, you're gonna need basically a really good understanding of what happens when we make half square triangles that then go together four of those to make the pinwheel block. So I made a big mess on purpose. If you saw the wonderful uh, batik block of the month quilt we did, these were all those extra pieces we were doing as we were trimming off those outer borders a long time ago. So I do have a stack of these and before we dive into the actual stack, let's talk about the two major different ways that half square triangles are created because that's gonna make a big difference possibly, especially for a new quilter, uh, especially those that are more challenged or really struggling with getting their blocks square. And here's why. When we're doing something starting with squares, going into triangles, we are going to be dealing with bias. There's no way around it, but there are different ways to start and finish. So let's review the two major easy ways of making half square triangles. I'm not gonna say I prefer one over the other. Um, they're all functional, but they do change where the bias lives. So the first one we're gonna do is the one I've been teaching for a lot of years. It's what I learned from my dear friend, Jenny Doan over at Missouri Star. And it's where we're gonna go around all four edges real quick. So size does not matter today, right? Uh, for this, because we're not dealing with putting it, we're just needing four half square triangles. So right now, I'm dropping a quarter inch, I'm gonna go literally around all four edges. I'm really hoping I'm right sides together. It looks like I am, I didn't even check, my goodness. Now for this, it's like softball Monday night. Go ahead and run right through first base, and then come around and start over. I like to do it this way. Uh, instead of trying to pivot at the quarter inch, I'm just not that accurate, it's hard to see. And this will just secure this, plus it'll give us something to work with here in a second. Drop this down again. So again, just all four sides, all the way around. And right now, in case you are not even aware of what bias means, bias is the diagonal of the grains. So right now these were cut straight of grain. So I'm sewing along the grain line. I'm sewing with the weave of the fiber on both the squares, top and bottom. Okay, so right now there's really no flex in this in any direction. So if I'm doing this style to make four half square triangles, the next thing I'm gonna do is I actually like to kind of just cut off a little bit of the dog ears because that's just gonna save me a little bit of work later. Okay, and now for this, I'm gonna lay my ruler between these thread lines, right? So basically what was corner to corner, and I'm gonna cut all the way through, make sure I cut all the way through, and I'm not even gonna move anything until I cut the second. Okay. So now, as I set this aside, you're gonna see the four. Oh good, I did get right sides together too. That's pretty cool. Right sides together, half square triangles coming over. And like for all of this, down the road that we're gonna talk about pressing because pressing does matter as well. So for these now, I'm gonna press to the dark side. Dark side. So as I have all four of these ones made, there is really no flex along the line, but there's a lot of flex now, or that's where the bias has shifted to. Our bias is now on the outside edges. All of the edges are bias. 
So this particular half square triangle can keep shifting from this point on because the outer edges have more flexibility than they do when you sew straight of grain. So to build a pin wheel, regardless of what style I'm doing, right, I'm just gotta get my pin wheels organized. And somehow it's always harder than it looks. <laughs> like this. Is that right? Okay. So either way now, um, and then the other potential pitfall in this, but you could trim still, is the way I made these is they're not all exactly, exactly the same size. So there could be some more flexibility. There could be some more shifting within there. So let's talk about the other way to make half square triangles, because I think this makes sense now, and we're going to still trim down and square these together in a few minutes. So now the other way that folks will make half square triangles is uh, a, basically a draw method and then stitch. So for this draw method, I'm gonna take a straight line, chalk pencil or something like this, and I'm just going to go ahead and run that along one diagonal. Now we have two different options and your patterns that you're following will tell you what to do. Some of the patterns will ask you to stitch right along this line. Now when you stitch along this line, you're gonna have one, so I stitched along here, right? Then I'm gonna cut this side off. So this is now a smaller half square triangle to be. That's where these actually came from. This side over here is gonna be perfect half square triangle, but this particular unit this way when stitched along the line only yields one half square triangle that you're looking for. The other method that is done exactly the same startup is we're gonna sew on both sides of the line. So let's do that one so you have an idea. This will actually yield two different half square triangles. And at the moment, I actually was stitching along the bias. Same thing, I'm just gonna kinda come over here and I'm just gonna kinda like I'm chain piecing. Drop this down again. And again, stitching on the bias, but because I have the two squares instead of pre-cut triangles, it's just easier for me to manage all of the fabric as it goes through the machine. I'm not having any pushing or pulling, any distorting, any of that kind of stuff. And so remember, <laughs> it's a lot in the prep work that goes into the block work. We're still answering the question how to square the finished block, but we have to work our way to good pieces so that it's easier to square at that block stage. So now traditionally we would take a ruler to protect our hands and we're gonna cut along that line. Feeling a nick in my blade. If you all have nicks in your blades, please change out your blade. I thought I just put that in, so I'm not sure what's going on. Same thing, I would press to the dark side now I should have made more of these because I don't have quite enough. <laughs> I need four for a pinwheel and I've got two because of the way we made it. But what I wanna really teach you here is now again, I don't have nearly the flex along that edge as I do along these edges because the bias is in here, right? The stretch was there, but now it's kind of secured. Now our triangle when done this way is going to be less uh, of an attitude problem for you while you're sewing the units together. Now, the other thing that happens when we're doing this, at least the way that Jenny and I used to do this, is we just did. We made the four blocks, the four um, uh, half square triangles, and then we would just grab them, and this is another key. We're gonna nest our seams. I did a video recently on nesting seams. It works here as well, because I'm just gonna be able to go with my dark fabric to my dark fabric in there. And then I'm gonna sew a line. But you can see, oh, even I didn't even get a great start. You can see there could be a lot of flexibility in here. So we would just sew those together, right? And then I'd grab the other ones and I would sew these together. All great, all fine and dandy. And then these are gonna come in and match up, but what you never saw me do was square these blocks. That was part of it. It was super fast, super easy, but there is a little bit less accuracy involved in this. So for squaring a half square triangle, you've seen me do it a million times, but I'm gonna do it one more time now, and that'll actually help concrete the way we're gonna handle the actual finished piece, is we wanna go ahead and let's figure out what size this square could be. Okay, so, oh, 
Let's say we're making a five and a half inch square because I have a little bit more than five and a half inches right now. So that's what, what would be happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my square. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my 45 degree diagonal on my block on, that I've made, put it on my seam. And the very first thing I'm doing is I'm cheating past my five and a half inch marks on both sides of the ruler here, just really making sure that my parallel my diagonal line is covered by that diagonal line there. So what we need to do is we need to shave it down. That's right. So we're gonna shave the first, and I like to shave off and off this way, moving from the base of the ruler towards the corner in both directions. Now once that's been shaved, it can be rotated 180 degrees using the same exact diagonal line, but now I'm gonna pinpoint that onto the five and a half inch mark at the back corner, then I've still got that wonderful diagonal running that way. Then again, shaving from the base of the ruler to the corner, the base to the corner. And as I do all of that, now oh, that darn little nick, but as you see, now I have a very nice, very crisp, very well squared half square triangle that would be one of the four units that goes together to create this pinwheel. So this pinwheel was done with this method. All of these fabrics are basically done bias first, and now they're straight of grain on the outside edge. They were all trimmed down. One of the other things that's important when pressing, even when I get to like this, the two by two stage, is I wanna press to the dark side each time. That way, as I'm laying them out, I have the opportunity to nest those seams. Now, many of you will also take the time at this point to go back here and you'll snip the and fan where all of the seams come together. I haven't gotten into that habit in my life as a quilter, and so I'm not going to promote something I don't personally do. But it's probably the best of all ideas, right? Because it eliminates the bulk in the center of this block. And the bulk in the center of this block could be a problem for machine quilting because you're going to have a lot of layers coming together. But more so, I have a feeling this is the other problem that is coming uh, for why the question was asked. How do you square a pinwheel block specifically? Because what'll happen now, using the exact same trick we tried to earlier, but now I need, remember I said supply list was a much larger, because this diagonal isn't going to give me what I need on this ruler to cut the way we just did. So now I need a much larger ruler, so when I'm buying my square rulers, I'm always hunting for one that has a nice big uh, 45 mark on there. And then again, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this diagonal, but what's happening is the ruler itself is wobbling. It's getting hung up on this mountain I've created with a seam allowance there. So one of the things you may find, it actually is very, very important to set your body mechanics up. So I'm very right-handed, so I'm going to now get to a point where I can set this 45 degree mark right where it goes, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust out to my corner. Now this particular ruler, because it has a half inch uh, side, I have to start and do one edge at a time. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was the perfect ruler? Maybe I'll come up with that. So at any rate, we're just squaring this down right now. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, remember that line comes along here. I'm looking at this top edge and I'm gonna go ahead again. And I'm just gonna shave but as I shave, I want to point out that all of the pressure in my hand is on the front edge of the ruler. I'm not cutting anything back here. So if it's wobbling, I don't want it to, I want it to wobble back here. I don't want it to wobble up here at all, if that makes sense. So I'm able to make this nice clean cut by putting the pressure forward, leaning my body forward into that ruler. And that gives me the opportunity to cut safely here without any wobble or any distortion along that edge. So I really think that that is maybe the answer that you were looking for when you sent good old Rob Appel an email, rob at michaelmillerfabrics.com, asking how do you square up a pinwheel block. Not only maybe were you working with biased edge blocks, which are harder to keep accurate. I love them because they're fast and easy. And over time of using them, they are pretty proficient as well. But again, I've had a little 
little more slop in quilts like this than when I've taken the time to do the trimming of each and every block individually. Drives me insane. But what I often do is just put on one of my favorite albums, listen to some great music, maybe chat with the kids or something, and I just trim all of those blocks at once. So set it aside as kind of your rogue uh, chores in between your creative moments. But it really is important to be trimming and pressing as you go each stage along with your quilt making, regardless if you're doing rectangles or triangles or circles or squares, whatever it is, take the time, I know it sounds a little bit weird coming from me, to slow down and evaluate and make sure you're doing your best possible work. And if you have another question, please drop me a line, rob at michaelmillerfabrics.com and I'll do my best to give you a great answer and probably a lot more information than you really were bargaining for. So anyways, we'll see you next week, kids. Oh, oh, class dismissed. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.